Welcome to the Livecast Construction Experience Podcast. I'm Kieran Brennan, co-founder of Livecast.com. Finally, the construction sector has entered its digital transformation, meaning the way we operate our projects and businesses day to day is being disrupted. This podcast is designed to help you in all areas of your business. We do this by bringing in experts across all key areas of a construction business who share their stories, their challenges, wins and losses so others can learn from their experiences. To watch previous episodes, please visit livecast.com or search livecast.com across all popular social platforms. I hope you enjoy the show. Okay, hello and welcome to another episode of the Live Cost Construction Experience. Delighted this week to venture out all the way to Colorado uh, to Mark Mitchell. Mark is the host of the Building Materials Sales and Marketing Podcast and the author of Building Materials Channel Marketing. Mark, you're very welcome to the Live Cost Construction Experience. How are you? I'm great. Doing great. It's a beautiful uh, sunny day here in Colorado. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm doing great you know in uh uh all of my um or almost every client that our company that i work with in building materials is you know so I, i'll call it surprisingly reporting that their sales are maybe 20 percent higher than they had projected they would be if you back like at their plan back in november interesting so and is 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 that due to you know the homeowner being at home on lockdown deciding to take on some projects themselves or is it through the trades through the contractors that they think sales are up it it looks like it's across the board when i talk to home builders they are all of a sudden they have tons of cu- more customers than they thought they would have when i when i talk to remodeling contractors they're saying yes uh these people were cooped up in their home and realized they hate their kitchen they hate their bathroom they want a new deck whatever offense, whatever they want, but, you know, they, they were sitting there staring at their home, you know, all day and realizing what they didn't like about it. So that's happening. And then other than maybe, um, we'll say, you know, the certain sectors like, like hotels and entertainment type of things, um, commercial construction is not, is not being slowed down at all. So we're building, you know, tons of new apartments uh, and, uh you know, other distribution centers, just businesses, businesses moving, you know, so it's been great that, you know, people I've been through, you know, a number of recessions in my 40 years in this business. And, you know, people tend to always look back at the last one. And so our 2009 one really affected, really was about construction (laughs) and residential construction. And it, it crushed things. And so now the next one comes along and people go, Oh, coronavirus is going to cause a recession so it'll be like then okay and and everyone's different you know i seen you uh, released a podcast and i think it was february of last year saying getting ready for the last recession did, did you know something that we didn't no no i just well you know it's coming you, you know that we're going to go through cycles it's cycles right? yeah yeah and, yeah and and it's always amazing to me how the economists you know can't predict or see it in hindsight it's kind of like oh my gosh you look back at 2008 that what was the there was a great movie about that that i think steve carroll was in it uh who uncut you know was the first person to see so he shorted all the housing things and made millions of dollars you know was the only person that realized wait there is a uh there's a, a waitress in Hollywood, Florida, that owns three homes, <laughs> and she's making you know fifty grand a year. What? There's something wrong here. Like how? How can that yeah, happen? Yeah, and it, it it is cycles. And when you look back on cycles, it was definitely there. There was the writing was on the wall that there was something going to happen. I don't think anybody could have predicted what actually happened, but there was something coming. Um, very interesting in getting into the material side of things it's, it's a space that we're very interested in here as a business but as well just to give people a bit of context uh, what, what's your own your own background and relationship with the construction industry well i've uh i've started working for uh an advertising agency in uh, toledo ohio that specialized in building materials and so their biggest client was owns corny fiberglass and that and so that became my account and And when I say advertising agency, we did very little advertising because we found that the the ability to actually help the salesperson connect with the customer is what really is going to make the sale. And so I focused totally on 
on that, on the channel distribution is really my expertise. So if you want to understand an architect, a general contractor, a subcontractor, you know, remodeler, a big box store, whatever, that's what I focus on, that, that niche. Because I find in building materials, understanding that channel of distribution is, is critical. Yeah. Because you can, you can think that, you, I see this happen all the time. So I, I, I'm working with a client and at the, we're at the builder show, they have this wonderful exhibit and a builder comes in and they sell the builder on this product. Uh, then I, three months later, I'll call that builder and say, okay, how's that going? He goes, well, you know, I, I didn't, I, my contractor talked me out of it. Okay. And, and so, you know, I don't have time to, whether I think it's a better product, I don't have time to deal with this. Right. So, so often, you know, you, you work with an architect and you get specified and then you get value engineered out of the project. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's understanding all of those layers and the dynamics of them is really what I've spent my whole career doing. And so I either worked for agencies that specialize in building materials or for 20 years, I owned my own agency. And then in 2011, I sold that to become a consultant because I found that 50% of the time when I was working with a company to discover their issues, uh, I would find that what they didn't need was better marketing or more marketing. Okay. They, they had another, they had another problem and they need to fix that first or their marketing wasn't really going to help them. What would you and say so then? Thought, okay, what, said, what would you say is the biggest problem, you know, building material suppliers come to you with? They, 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 um, they come to me because they're stuck. <laughs> like our, our sales have plateaued. They aren't growing at the rate we think. We have a new competitor. Maybe they're actually declining, you know, and that's when they come to me. If things are going okay, you know, the, uh, they, <laughs> they don't need me to, to rock the boat, yep. okay? And, uh, and so, so that's what they, they come to me with, like, we've, we've tried lowering the price. We've tried more ads. We've tried this. We've tried whatever, and, and nothing. These things are not working. So there's something we're missing. We need the perspective of an outsider <laughs> who can see the obvious that we don't see. That's, and so that's what I do. Okay, so you're, you're coming into the business, you're putting fresh eyes on a lot of the processes um, and you're deploying your experience of how a lot of these processes come together to make a nice cycle of, of sales. Uh, would you be introducing like digital marketing campaigns to, to, to the process? Oh, I mean, that's, a, that's the other one, you know, is the building materials industry is 10 years, at least 10 years behind other industries. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if we look at like Apple or Nike or who, whoever, you know, just leading brands and so forth, you see how they have understood the switch to digital. And, and we still have the building materials industry not fully understanding or embracing it. Now, there's a few that, that, are, that are, got it, okay, get it. But most of them still view like, okay, I have a website, which is really just a catalog of my products. Okay. That's the purpose of the website. Okay. So you have to have one and existing customers can come there and find what they need. Right. The website can't actually sell somebody. Okay. I mean, they're, they're, and so they're, we're kind of like half still wasting money on things like printing catalogs or trade, going to trade shows. Um, and, you know, I look and say, you spend whatever, 40 or $400,000 going to a trade show with your exhibit. And, uh, and you got two and a half days to meet as many people as you can. You come away with 100 leads. And when I come back to you six months later, you can't show me that any of those leads became customers. So why would you spend this money that way? And if you had, if you, if you had a really great digital um, uh, setup, you would be, you'd, have, you'd be having that trade show 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. And they can't quite get in their heads that, um, uh, so, so that's, it's, it's, uh, we're certainly lagging, but I think because of, um, companies like Katera and Integra, uh, who are offsite builders, I think there's a real, I, I don't know if the word's revolution, but there, we've now opened the eyes to investors 
to say you no longer have to put up with the 30% inefficiency that's baked into our systems. Buildings take too long to be built and they cost too much. They don't have to, okay? And so, so I think that focus on efficiency. In other words, when I, when I talk to contractors about doing things like online procurement and so forth, I'm looking saying, okay, yes, you could use it to find the best price, but you really should be using it to make yourself more efficient. Okay. Yeah. It's all yep. about productivity and efficiency. Okay. It's not about the cheapest price. Okay. So, so if, you know, like I, I love to read books and, and I love to support my local, we have a great independent bookstore here that I love to give them my business. But if I'm reading about a new book or I hear about a new book, I'm very likely to just go to Amazon, push a button, click, it's done. So it's, and, and it's not about the cost. It's about, okay, you know, within three minutes, I'm, I've, the book is on its way. I'll be here tomorrow, right? Uh, as opposed to I'm going to get in my car, go to, the, go to the bookstore and see if they have it, okay? Um, and so I think that as in our personal lives, we're being driven to digital, okay? And younger people get this. I always make fun of like, we have too many old white guys in the building materials industry, okay? <laughs> As it's like, you know, like, you know, I, I have to have my 20, 20 some year old assistant, you know, tell me, okay, this is Zoom, this is how it works. Yeah, this is what yeah. you push this button mark, okay? Right? <laughs> like, and so, um, so I feel that they, they still don't quite, understand and appreciate the power and so it's so coming there's a couple it's, of I mean, things there that you touched on mark just just to uh roll you back slightly because there's a couple of really interesting points amazon i think is a really interesting conversation because you're you're, you're so right Am, amazon has made a huge impact on our personal lives we, we're happy to use it why hasn't it being done in construction? Why hasn't there been an Amazon to come in and completely just turn how we buy material? Why has that not happened yet? Um, the, the people who have tried, there's been a few people who have tried that I thought originally, oh my gosh, this could be the Amazon of building materials if they do this right. And what I found was that they were experts in the digital world but they had no clue about building materials. So I was, I was shocked to look at, okay, here's the CEO of this company that has millions of dollars to set this system up. And I looked on LinkedIn and I was shocked that he didn't know a single person in building materials. He wasn't, he's not connected with the CEO of Kohler or GAF or Owens Corning or DuPont, yeah. whatever, you know, he had no connections. So he literally was, you know, going uh, without that customer knowledge, he was setting up, you know, a, a, a digital marketplace. Um, and that was a big blind spot for them. They just assume, well, we, we, we know how people are. We know how people buy. We know how the whatever. And so it ultimately failed. Now, I'm seeing, then we also have like uh, Wayfair, coming in and uh, you know you know selling furniture but then saying hey we could also sell these building materials you know primarily to the do-it-yourself or the consumer versus the pro and um uh so what i've seen is like some smart distributors we'll say like abc roofing um realize this and 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 making it as easy as possible for their con roofing contractor customers to be as digital as they want. If you still want to come in to the local, our local distributor, stop, you're welcome anytime. Here's our showroom. We got a guy behind the counter can help you. But if you would like just nine o'clock at night sitting in your underwear on your, in your lazy boy chair, you'd like to come in and place an order and have it delivered to the job site tomorrow online, you can do that. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's got to be the way it's going to go. Surely it's got to be the way it's going to go. It amazes me that it hasn't happened yet. Um, there is, you're, dead, you're so right, that there is a, a startup graveyard for material marketplaces, and it's an interesting one. It feels like Amazon could do it if they wanted to do it, um, right. but 
they might not get the bulk material. So I, I feel personally that Amazon will come in and take over your fasteners, anything that can be put in a box and delivered. I think Amazon will, will win on. Well, yeah, I, sorry, keep no. waiting for, I keep waiting for Amazon to buy Lowe's. Okay, our second biggest uh, yeah. behind Home Depot big box because they bought Whole Foods, okay, <laughs> and they've integrated Whole Foods very nicely into their Amazon thing. Okay, so if I were Amazon, I was looking at different categories of what we what do we do next? Okay, um, building materials would certainly be up there, and a company like Lowe's that just hasn't gotten its act together in the last couple of years, you know. Um, continues to struggle, I think, you know, might be an attractive buy because now I have, I have, I don't know, uh, I don't know the number, 1,500 locations around the United States that, that like if you want a big bathtub, it can be delivered there for you and then they can deliver it to you or you can pick it up. Um, the, and the, went, the interesting part is the companies like Home Depot who are very innovative in terms of technology they've got some really smart stuff going on but if amazon decide to do that look at number three look at number four as an entry point the problem that mb companies face is amazon have done this in the past they can underpin that business with say aws which is massively profitable they can run that at a loss and literally just start to kill the market which is dangerous for for other companies um how do then i mean your cause your direct customers being your local building suppliers and servicing local contractors, how do they compete with that digital world if it becomes reality? I think, I, I think you know, one, it's going to become reality. <laughs> Not quite sure who's going to pick up the ball, okay? Um, but it's going to become reality. It may become reality fragmented. Like here, if you're a roofing contractor, here is my online thing right? Very like, this is all we have is things for roofing contractors. We don't have stuff for everybody. Okay. So I think we're going to see that coming from primarily one-step distributors that are going to focus on their customer and make it as easy as possible for them to buy from them. Um, they'll keep information about your past purchases. All of this wonderful stuff is at your fingertips. Um, they can process rebates. So I think that will be one way we'll see it. Um, then you have the broader people, um, like, uh, well, I can't, there's my mind right now. I can't think of their name, but you know, we have, we have, uh, companies that focus, let's say on servicing, um, multifamily, uh, like we have everything. If you own an apartment, we have everything you need, mm-hmm. you know, carpet, paint, whatever you need to keep it up and going. We have everything you need and we have this online marketplace and you order today and we will deliver it to your apartment tomorrow for your facilities manager, your maintenance guy to fix it, you know, he'll do the labor, we'll bring you the parts, right? And then some of those are going to big multifamily places and not saying, if you buy everything from us, this is what we'll do for you. So they're literally locking a contract. You know, like I I live in, in, I live in an apartment and, you know, the maintenance guy says, oh no, we're not allowed, we have to buy everything from this company, okay? And it's like, I can't walk down the street to Home Depot and I know they have it and get it. And maybe it's even cheaper. I'm not allowed to do that. Like, and so, so I think we're going to see that. And then you're going to see some, you know, maybe uh, I don't, it doesn't seem like it's in Wayfair's um, thing to go to. There's the difference between there's the consumer and the pro and the consumer is, is getting, is, is very open to buying everything online. Yeah. Um, and, and so sometimes we have a shipping issue with a big, you know, a big door, a big window, you know, that may all of a sudden still not practical for them yet, but they have no trouble doing it. The pro is, is, uh, most pros, the most successful pros, let's say, you know, the biggest uh, roofing contractor in town is probably over 50 years old. Okay. And, and things are going great. He's set in his way. Many contractors still use fax machines, you know, and so he's not the person that's going to change. It's going to be the 20, 30, 40 year old uh, contractor who is looking, saying, okay, I want to grow. I want to be successful. I want to do it smart. Right. So this other guy has three people in charge of purchasing because of the way he does it. I could have one person if I was using, you know, online procurement. 
yeah. right? And so they're, they're the smart people, or they're the, not that the older guy's dumb, the older guy's very smart, but he's learned this, this is how I built this business. This is what works. Me personally going to the uh, dealer distributor and meeting with them and talking over the price or whatever, that's how we do things. Okay. It's, and, it, it, it's, it's going to be an interesting way for your customers being the suppliers as well is as we transition through these new ways of, of doing business and we start to go into these digital worlds, a lot of their values would have been down to building relationships. Make sure we get to these contractors and we build relationships with these guys that they know they can come and trust us. They can pick up the phone and call us. When we implement technology to that, a lot of the time it removes that personal touch, that relationship, I suppose. What can suppliers do then in that instance to maintain relationships or are we just going to have to accept that we're going to have to give that up? Well, it's funny. I had a client last fall called and said, Mark, I have 20 salespeople, okay? 10 of them are older, 10 of them are younger, okay? The younger people don't see the value in having a meeting with a customer, don't see the value, think a phone call is a waste of time, inefficient, right? They, they know how to use text, every other tool in the world to meet the needs of the customer without having a relationship, okay? The older guys only understand face-to-face -face meetings and phone calls, okay? Maybe an email, right? But we would never answer a text, okay? You know, customer texts me, can I have this tomorrow? Uh, it's all he wants to know. Yes, no. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so they're like, can you help my older guys understand the younger guys? And can you help the younger guys understand? You know, and it was like, it was a, it was kind of fun assignment. But, uh, but I see this all the time. And so uh, you've got, if you have uh, a, once again, it's, I think it's an age thing. Where, well, I, I get, well, let me put it this way. You talk, we're talking about relationships. So number one, I have a relationship with Amazon. I have a relationship with FedEx. I have a relationship with a number of companies, United Airlines, where a number of companies that I don't know anybody personally there, right? But I have a relationship because of how well they execute digitally or how well they meet my needs. Yep. Okay. Like I say, when I push a button to Amazon, you know, uh, I get an email saying, boom, uh, we got your order. Uh, 10, you know, an hour later, your order shipped. Here's the tracking number, right? Then your order arrived, has been delivered. Okay. Wow. I mean, it's like I, they, I, they got my back. I don't have to go back in and call. Is it, did it ship or whatever? We're in the building materials industry. We're still stuck back in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, we've got, and so that's one way of building relationship is by delivering on the value or promise. Okay. You don't actually have to know anybody. Okay. You just can, you know, you can count on them because the systems are so good. Right. Yep. Now the other kind of relationship that, that I've, you know, found is you can have a digital relationship with somebody. Okay. Like I have 10, you know, I have I don't 11,000 connections on LinkedIn. You know, mostly 90% of them are in the building materials industry. Okay. So, you know, so one of the things that, you know, that I, I make sure that I spend maybe 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn. Right. So if it's your birthday, I'm going to wish you happy birthday. If you got a new job, I'm going to say congratulations on your promotion. Okay. If you posted something that I think is insightful, has value, I will like it, comment on it, maybe share it. Right. So I go to a trade show and, and I'm walking down the aisles and people will come up to me and say, hey, you're Mark Mitchell. You know, we're connected on LinkedIn. I really like what you're shared in this and thanks for whatever, right? And, and so we've never met before, right? And, and, so, um, and so I think you, you know, through, like I love LinkedIn as a business to business tool. Uh, cause I can, you know, make connections, build relationships, establish myself, build trust with them. Um, and, um, well, there, there, there's a question on, on that one, then Mark, how can suppliers use LinkedIn to attract contractors? Oh, it's easy. So one is you're on LinkedIn. Okay. And you are regularly posting information. 
Okay. And, and I just call it, you're, you are yourself. And I think that in an ideal world, once a day, you have something to share. Okay. Like everybody, everybody is a thought leader, has knowledge that, 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 that they don't under, they don't really va understand like just how much knowledge they have that would be a value if they would share it. Okay. Yeah, it's true. So if they, if they just put up insights, if there's an interesting story, if they have a roofing contractor that they're following on there and the roofing contractor puts, here's our 25th anniversary or whatever. And they say, congratulations on 25 years. Okay. Well, I'm finding more and more now th th this is in the, so you have individuals that it's easy to connect with that, that like LinkedIn. There's groups of like roofing contractors, painting contractors. You can join those groups and you can then start to meet more people in your region, in your, where you're trying to focus. Um, and so it, I find it's a great ice. Well, one, it's a great way as an icebreaker to kind of just let them know you're there. And, and, and then you start sharing stuff, not selling. And, and all of a sudden they go, wait, this person has some knowledge. Like there, there's a, uh, and it's, a, it's also about being yourself. If yeah. you are, a, you know, like there's a, there's, there's a couple of guys that are just, they do stuff that I would go, what? You know, they're, they're like literally, but that's their personality. They're just fun people. So they put funny stuff, you know, about one guy in Florida, Bruno, he, he just, Contractors love him because he's always sharing something that is, um, uh, it's usually funny. It's like, look at this roofing contractor doing this. Oh my gosh, right? You know, and, mm -hmm. but it's also informative. Like, wow, that's very dangerous. You know, that, that you could, you know, you know, you could fall or something. And so, and it's like kind of being yourself. But I, I just think that uh, LinkedIn right now hasn't, Facebook has been kind of, let's say overused and screwed up. LinkedIn is still hasn't gotten to that point yet. <laughs> yeah. And so right now it's a great tool and it doesn't cost you anything. It hasn't you know, been, hasn't been ruined by marketers just yet. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, at some point it'll get to a certain size and they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll change something that doesn't make it work so I well. Mean, in, in the example you gave of your, your guy comes to you with his, you know, 10 sales guys. And um, have you seen companies like building material companies use LinkedIn and use it as a tool for their sales guys to attract new customers? Yes. Yes. And, and so, you know, it's like, so I had a client that wanted, um, they, they, they were selling to a large general contractor who had offices in like 20 cities in the United States. Okay. And the Denver office used their product and loved it. Okay, but they couldn't get other offices to even return a phone call. There was no interest. Okay, so I said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna write on LinkedIn. We're gonna write a little case history about how smart the Denver office of this GC was because they used this product and this was the benefit of using it. Okay, right? They're they're much more productive. Whatever. Right? And so, boom, we put that on LinkedIn. Right? Well, the CEO of that. She's, that general contractor gets a weekly report of social media activity. Okay. All right. And, and, and so because we, we call, called out their name, uh, hashtag the contractor's name, you know, it boom right away. Everybody saw it. Right. Well, like three days later, my client called and said, Mark, we, we've gotten five calls from different offices of this GC that want to meet with us. It was like, wait a minute, the guy in Denver looks smart. We, we can't get, we got to, we got to look smart too. What do the boss think? We're not using this, right? <laughs> and so you can use it that way. Um, you can also find the company that you want to deal with on LinkedIn. Look at the people, which do you know any people? Uh, which person do you think is the decision maker, Right. And even if you just say, hey, we're, we're both in the roofing industry or painting industry or flooring, I'd like to connect with you, right? You, you'll, most of the time, they will, they will accept your connection, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. you just got to be careful then to not assume that, that he's ready to have a meeting and a phone call. Like you then, you then start to, <laughs> you know, just, you're just sharing things. You're just saying, hey, this is a good guy. This is a, this, I could trust this guy's knowledgeable. Um, we're, and, we're, yeah, we're, we're quite active on LinkedIn to, to be honest. Like we put a lot, I mean, we do a lot of this stuff as well. So we try and think what would be valuable to, to our customers and what, what, yes. what would be valuable to our connections. And we try and 
create content around that, push it out. Um, and a lot of the guys, our own customers would come to us and say, well, listen, I'm not going to go and do a podcast. So what else could I potentially do? Um, and one of my thoughts is to, to just document what you're actually doing on a day to day and share that. Cause a lot of people are in the industry and do genuinely have an interest in it. Uh, in terms of content, then how, do you have any ideas around what sort of suppliers can create from a content point of view and share with their customers? Um, the biggest thing, the first thing is to, as I, I said earlier, realize that if you have any employees that have been in this business for a while, they have knowledge. Right? And, and so the next step is to look and say, people are more interested in not making a mistake than uh, getting a benefit. Okay. So you're more concerned, you're going to more likely be interested in something like, you know, don't lose a thousand dollars as opposed to how, you know, here's how to get another thousand dollars. Okay. And, and so the first thing I tell people is like, okay, let's say once again, we're, and for some reason we're stuck on roofing here, but let's say you're a roofing, you're, you're selling roofing materials. You've been selling them for a number of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so now are you focused on the architect, the owner, the GC, the contractor? Who are, you, who are you focused on? And you could be focused on all of them, okay? But for each one of them, what are the five biggest mistakes you see people make? What's the five biggest mistakes you see an architect make when specifying a roof or an owner makes in his decision or a GC or, or the roofing contractor? What are the five biggest mistakes? And I've never met, you know, an experienced person who can't just rattle those off. Maybe yep. there's three, maybe there's 12, maybe there's seven, but that is, that is always of great, of great interest. If somebody just shares from my experience, here's the five biggest mistakes I find people make when choosing a roof material or a system or whatever. Right. And uh, where most people write, uh, here's our new, um, X ply plus uh, membrane. It yeah. has a 25 year warranty and it's like, nobody cares. Right? It's me, 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 me. Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're going. I mean, and, and you can also, you know, you know, you can also write, you know, like how to make a roof last longer. Okay. You know, maintenance tips, whatever it is. So it's kind of like, okay, this guy is actually trying to be helpful with information. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, it's value-based content. I mean, we, we, we talk about it all the time here. We, we, I mean, we, it's so easy for us to do product demonstrations about how we save customers money. But do we really think that's the best way to, to, to talk to new customers? We don't. But we say, well, how, how can we provide value first? And eventually, eventually with enough value, we think that there'll be enough value provided that they'll say, hey, these guys look like a decent company to do business with. Maybe I'll go and have a look at what they actually do on the back end, visit a website. And it, 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 it works quite well. Will there be room for a, a, a new version of the book, the Digital Building Materials Channel Marketing, someday? Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I'm working on it. I, I, I could say I'm halfway done because I wrote my first book in 2013 and so the world has on one hand has really changed on the other hand a lot of stuff is still the same um and i i wish i had a, a picture of it here right now but i i drew out uh, uh I, I i always meet with people and they say what do you do and i get out a I get out a notepad and i would draw a diagram of how building materials are sold and i'm a terrible artist right i'm so and they would go, oh, okay, I understand, All right? So I said, gee, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create an infographic. And I turned it into a big poster that I mailed out to all these companies. And I still go to companies today and I'll see my poster hanging on the wall because a CEO will say, Mark, you know, normally I hire somebody new to this industry. And it t it, I see a year later, they walk in my office and go, I finally figured this business out. Right. And he said, if I show them your graphic, I can explain it. Like, this is what a one step distributor is, a two step. This is a dealer. This is a contractor. This is how they all interrelate. Right. And so, what I've been struggling with is how to update that to reflect what's happening digitally. Okay. Because that's it. So, I, and, and I can't, I'm trying to make it as, as easily to understand graphic as my original graphic, but it's this big 
it looks like a big mess right now. There's all these lines going everywhere, you know, and, and, and so that's what I've been really struggling with because as we're talking here, this hasn't really, we know it's there, we know it's coming, but it hasn't, you know, it hasn't clearly defined itself. No, and so I think that, I think that um, the building materials industry moves very slowly. They adapt to new things very slowly, but I think between coronavirus um, and and just the, the what's going on digitally, I think primarily with their distributors, I think the the industry is going to go through have to it's going to change faster than it's going to be comfortable with. Yeah, okay? do you, I mean do just. Do, do you ever think there's room for the brand to, I mean, let's say James Hardy, some of the big brands, to, to just jump the distributor, just literally go straight to the contractor? Do you think we'll ever see that day? They, they, no, they, they, will, they, they, uh, they will do that. I mean, they, they will do whatever it takes to get the order, right? If they feel that, you know, like the, you know, the contractor says, well, I'm going gonna, I'm I'm gonna to use uh, Nichiha or Laura instead of James Hardy, um, uh, because it's a dollar cheaper than your distributor's price, they'll go, okay, we'll sell it directly to you at that price, right? We go, screw the distributor, right? Now, it, it, you know, there's companies that, that have a reputation for, I'm going to make the sale any way I can, which means if I have to go around you, I will. And then there's other companies that are loyal to the distributor. They'll sit down with the distributor and say, look, we got to find a dollar. How about we'll, we'll kick in 50 cents, you kick in 50 cents, and, and let's get this order, right? But so, and I've always found in my, you know, thing, it's better to be loyal uh, to somebody than, because than, uh, uh, I, I think they're going to continue to provide, distributors are going to continue to provide that, if you will, last mile of delivery. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, James Hardy doesn't want to have trucks that have to go to a job site and deliver the product, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of the products, as we know, are, are big or they're in, you're buying them in such bulk, you know, you're buying a hundred sheets of drywall. That's, yeah. that, that, that's a bit, that's weighs a lot. Of, you know, that, what I do you do with that? I, I, I actually really think you've, you, you might have nailed one of the key reasons why uh, this hasn't happened at, at scale and it is the last mile. The local merchant, the local supplier can deal with that last mile. He, he understands it. He's got systems in place. And for a big brand or a big online brand even to come in and try and play with that is really, really difficult to get consistency in, in ordering and deal with the problems and the returns that we know happen uh, all yeah. the time. So it's an absolute key aspect of it. Mark, it's been an absolute wealth of uh, knowledge around materials. The the, the, the interesting play and how this is going to play out from a digital point of view. I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. Hopefully when we start to get some traction on it, we can get you back on. You can start to tell us about it, how it's going to work better. <laughs> than what it is. Anytime. Yeah, but it's been a pleasure, Mark. Thanks very much for coming on. Oh, my pleasure.